Not everybody has the ability to focus on the game for 10 hours a day, but throwing it up on a second monitor and AFKing while you get some work done is a great way to make some passive GP or gain some XP. And with that in mind, welcome to AFKing 9 to 5. Fellas, how are you guys doing? I hope you're all doing well. After just a small break, I'm back and ready to test out some more AFK methods. About two weeks ago with the release of Varlamore, we saw people going crazy over content like Perilous Moons. This is basically a more mechanical Barrows that's accessible by most players. And we also saw a lot of talk about the Colosseum. But outside of PVM updates, we also got a ton of skilling stuff. We got the Hunter Guild and Hunter Rumors, as well as new ways to train Prayer and Runecrafting. But today I want to look at what might be the most overlooked method that actually came out with Varlamore. I'm talking about Calcified Rock Mining. This method is basically the big brother to Camdozel Mining. It's almost the exact same, just with a buffed XP rate and a slightly better reward. All you need to do is click the vein, AFK, get products, and then refine them into smaller products. It's quite straightforward. I've been hearing that it's actually a fantastic method, and it could be the shooting star killer. Apparently it's that good. But I guess we won't really know until after I try it out. And since this is a brand new method in a new area, I'm going to try and be as detailed as possible. I'm going to assume you know absolutely nothing, and I'm going to give you everything you need to know to do this activity. If you already know a fair bit, there will be timestamps in the video description, as well as on the little red bar at the bottom of the video if you want to skip to a specific part. But to really kick this off, let's start with a gear setup. Why did I say gear setup? I meant requirements. Let's talk about the requirements. To actually mine these rocks, you only need 41 mining. We don't yet have the skilling success rate, but as with most skills, you can just assume that the higher your mining level is, the higher your success rate is, and therefore the more XP you will get per hour. After my 8 hours, we'll see my XP rate at 99, and then try to figure out how much XP we would get at a lower level. Outside of the mining requirement, there actually are some quest requirements. You will obviously need completion of Children of the Sun just for access to Varlamore. This quest does not have any requirements and can be done fairly quickly. You'll also need the completion of Twilight's Promise. The only requirement for this quest is Children of the Sun, but it is recommended to be at least level 40 combat. And the big one is the completion of the Perilous Moons quest. This is listed as a master difficulty quest, but if you're about 75 combat, you should get through this no problem, but you also have other trinket requirements like 20 hunter, 20 fishing, 20 runecrafting, and 10 construction. Completing these three quests will give you access to Camp Torum, and in combination with 41 mining you should be good to go. So with that out of the way, we can actually talk about gear now. The big thing to note here with gear is that mining enhancers do not work. So that means basically anything that would boost our chance of getting double ore or anything like that will not have any effect, so our setup will be pretty basic. I'm pretty much just wearing full prospector with a celestial ring. Sometimes the question comes up on if you should use Varrock armor or not. The best way to put it into words is that there is never a downside to wearing Varrock armor. The top works as a prospector top, so if you don't know if it's going to be a benefit, it's never going to be a negative. But if you don't have the Varrock top, a prospector jacket will give you the exact same benefit. The Celestial Ring is just for the Invisible Mining level buff. We don't actually know yet if these rocks will give us a benefit past 99, but it will definitely give you a benefit if you're, say, level 76, trying to get to level 80. And the only other thing we'll need is a pickaxe. These have no special gathering mechanic, so just bring the best pickaxe that you've got. In the episode about Amethyst, I made a very big mistake of wearing a glory. So before we even start mining today, I kind of want to clear up how mining works with gems and glories, etc. If you are not wearing a glory, you have a 1 in 256 chance to roll a gem instead of actually mining the rock. If you're wearing a charge glory, this is any variant, a regular one, the trimmed one, an eternal one, all three of them give the same benefit. You now have a 1 in 86 chance of getting a gem. If you hit the gem drop table, you now receive a chance to get a gem or absolutely nothing. If you do hit this table, it will not deplete the rock or grant mining experience. So to keep it very, very simple, unless you really, really want gems, there is absolutely no reason to bring a glory here. Our setup is very straightforward, so I think most people will have pretty much everything I've got in this setup. If you don't have Prospector or a Celestial Ring, maybe that's something you want to work on getting before you come here, but it won't make that big of a difference in the long run. Outside of gear, you might be curious on how to actually get to the mine, and this is also quite simple. If you're playing a main account, you can buy a Calcified Moth from the GE and teleport right to the town center. Once you're there, just run east and you're in the mine. If you play an account that doesn't have access to the GE and you don't have any of these teleports, you actually have about 1 million options to get there. The fastest one is using the Quetzal transportation system and traveling right in front of Camp Torum. And I swear, if anyone complains about my pronunciation of this town, you're probably right, and thank you for commenting on the video. Smash like in Raid Shadow Legends. 
But if you haven't built the Quetzal Nest yet, you can use any of the pre-built Quetzal spots and just run over, or even just teleport to the Hunter Guild using the Whistle or the Hunter Cape. And if none of that is an option, there is always the Fairy Ring being AJP, and then you can make the trek over. And I think that's all we really need to know before we jump into it. I'll probably talk more about like some more intricacies with the method after I've done my eight hours, but for now, I'm gonna test it out and I'm gonna leave you with Brian to keep you busy. Ah, good morning, fellas. Gather round, gather round. Today we have a jolly good tale from the annals of literature, but beware, it's a story of daring feats and underground adventures. Now brace yourselves for a literary masterpiece that's as gritty a coal mine and as deep as, well, a coal mine. Bruh. Okay, this bit was supposed to be like a British guy telling like a children's story about mining, uh, but it has become way too complicated, so I'm just gonna do a mod does. I am actually genuinely surprised at how good that was. The first thing and probably the most interesting thing to everybody is what is the AFK time? While the time between clicks does vary a little bit, it's actually pretty consistent. The shortest one was about a minute and the longest one was about a minute and a half. So I feel pretty comfortable saying this is about a minute and 15 AFK per click. And it was very easy to maintain this while just having it on my second monitor and getting work done on my main one. There's not really a whole lot of thought that goes into this when you're doing it. As long as you have like two veins, you should be good. And pretty much every single spot in this mine is completely viable. So if you can find a world where one wall is completely free, you're good for the entire day. I never got crashed in quotation marks, but there is a mechanic where like water falls down. So sometimes people click on it. If you are mining a spot that has water coming from it, you have a 15% increase to your skilling success rate, which when you say 15% like that, you'd think, oh, 15% more XP it's just not it doesn't work like that to be completely honest i don't think it's even worth going out of your way to click this especially if you're just trying to afk the 15 percent will not give you a crazy xp boost so if you want to maintain that like one minute to one minute and a half afk time don't worry about the waterfall the second most interesting thing is probably the xp gain i cannot believe it's this good I am going to assume that this is because I'm 99 mining, so if you're in like the 70 range, you'll probably get less than I did. We don't have a skilling success rate, but I'm going to use Motherload Mine as an example because that's what the wiki compares it to. So at 99 mining, I got 45,000 XP for the hour, giving me a total of 360k for the day. For reference, I've done an episode on Amethyst and on Shooting Stars after the update. At Amethyst, I got 128k, and at Shooting Stars, I got 212k. I think both of those are actually more AFK, so it, they might still be more appealing. And I know at the start of this, I said this could be the shooting star killer. That's just what I was hearing. For the extra like 150k, I can see some people switching over, but the AFK time of both of those activities is considerably higher. Shooting stars is like seven minutes very consistently, and amethyst can be anywhere from five seconds to over 10 minutes. But I think this actually fits like very perfectly into a niche. Like if I use the mining XP examples on the wiki on like what certain activities should give XP wise, it tells me at 99 mining, I should get 52,000 XP at Motherload Mine. And if you've ever done Motherload Mine, you can tell it's like super inconsistent for some reason. Even at 99, I don't think I've ever gotten more than 35k an hour when actually AFKing. So at least for me, this one would definitely go above at least Motherload Mine. But another big thing is that if you're an Iron Man, this activity is pretty nice for some passive prayer experience. And I know you're probably confused, like we're mining, how am I getting prayer experience? Well, you're not actively getting prayer experience, but you are banking it. So instead of having to go out and collect insult heads or collect bones, you're collecting blessed bone shards here. In the course of eight hours, I got 22,059 blessed bone shards. These basically come out to be about five XP per shard. So in my eight hours, I banked 110,000 prayer experience. I think the math on this comes out to be like, if you did this from as soon as you could at 41 all the way to 99, you would get roughly 2 million prayer experience, something like that. So I could see Ultimate Iron Man being a big fan of this when they're going for 99. It saves you a little bit of time at pest control while you get your mining done. And I could even see some Iron Man using this just to push upwards of 85 prayer. The XP is nothing to like go crazy about, especially as a main account, but essentially for getting very good mining XP, you're banking about 14,000 prayer XP per hour. And on top of all these great things, you also get a ton of smithing XP. As you're mining, you'll get calcified deposits, 
the chance of getting one of these calcified rocks is one in 75. So you're not getting them all that frequently, which is nice for AFK. And on average, to fill up my inventory, it was taking about an hour and 10 minutes, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. So you don't have to make too many trips to the anvil or the bank per day. And once your inventory is full, you can run over and break them down on an anvil, or you can just put them in the bank and do that later. But throughout my day, I did this and I broke down every single calcified deposit I got. From these, I got 27 calcified moths, which are teleports to the area. These are also really nice if you want to do something like perilous moons in the future. But the smithing XP I got from this was a whopping 123 XP for the day, or about 18 XP per hour. Yeah, you don't actually get any smithing XP, which is fine. We, we can't expect more and more and more, can we? But overall, I'm really happy with this method. I think if this scale similar to Motherload Mine, it's probably good to start around 75 mining. And honestly, if you're someone who likes just like the low effort, not the completely AFK, this would probably be my choice for 99 mining if I did it again. Of course, if you just need that downtime, there's nothing that's going to beat shooting stars. Shooting stars are just so good. But yeah, I'm happy it has like a spot in the meta. Like it actually has a niche use for a group of players. I have no way to give you an exact rate because we don't have skilling success rates, but I'm going to guess if you started at 41 mining, you'd be getting roughly 20k an hour. At 75, you're probably looking closer to 30, 35k, and then it will just increase as you level up from there. Like using Motherload Mine as an example, if you get there as soon as you can, when you're mining pay dirt at level 30, you have a 28.91% chance of success, and at level 99, you have a 41.41% chance of success. So it does scale up a bit as you go, and this is expected from skilling. So this one, honestly seal of approval yes great activity super easy to maintain good xp of course with any skilling activity you don't have to commit to a 100 hour grind if you want to try it out yourself go do an hour if you think the xp is worth it feel free to stick around if not shooting stars are still a possibility but this one overall pretty good and that is my video on calcified rock mining I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and even watching all the way through. A special thank you to the big fellas, Snacks, Dan Smeghead, and Loki FM, as well as the fellas, Jujo, Italk, Halal Platter, Sky, Otomachi, Spooky Bets, and Chris Dungey. I hope I pronounced your name right. But of course, if I didn't, please let me know in the comments so I can fix it, please. But yeah, that's all I've got. I was gonna do this episode on Vyres, but there's so much cool stuff in Varlamore, and I kind of want the next one to be on the prayer method. Uh, so if that's something you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments, or if there's any other methods you'd like to see or know of, that would be extremely helpful to me. I've just been addicted again. Like, I'm actually just like playing the game for fun. It's crazy how that works, right? I'm going to try and cover a lot of the Varlamore stuff next, just so that's a resource for people if they want it. I think they killed it with Varlamore, and I might just do like a video talking about Varlamore as a whole, because I think they nailed this update. Like, obviously there are some problems, but it was a really good update, let's be honest. But other than that, I've really got nothing left to say, so I'll see you in the next one.